Hello YouTube, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Today we're going to take a look at our first lesson for the MCSA. Now the MCSA is going to be broken up into three exams. There's going to be the MCSA, MCSA 7410, the 7411, and the 7412. Now you can also substitute any one of those for additional exams, which I'll cover in a later lesson. For instance, I didn't take the 7412 for my MCSA. I took the 7470, uh, 74 409. But you, so there's there's other options you can take as well. But for the most part, most people are going to be taking the 410, the 411, and the 412. I took the 410, the 411, and uh, 74 409. So this is installing and configuring servers 1.1. So this is pretty much straight out of um, ExamRef. This whole lesson will be based off of the Microsoft Press uh, ExamRef books. So to the T, I am going to do these videos. One video, 1.2 is going to be another, 1.3, etc. So today we're going to take a look at installing and configuring servers. Now, you might be asked why we need to know some of this stuff to do with licensing. Well, it's huge. If you're going to become a system administrator, you know, MCSA used to stand for Microsoft Certified System Administrator, and now it's Solution Associate. So when we think about that, we're planning to be a mini a system administrators because it's the same thing. It's just, you know, unless you're taking Office 365 or you're taking some other type of MCSA like Windows 7 or 8, for the most part, MCSA is going to land you if you take a server one in a, in a system administrative role or a network administrative role. So you need to know about licensing. You can't go and say you're going to bill, you're a system administrator and you tell your company you're going to get this and that, and then you realize that your licensing doesn't allow you to do that. So the first thing you need to understand is Windows Server versions. So there's Foundation, Essentials, Standard, and Data Center. Now there's others um, um, that actually, no, there's not. They actually all are in here. Pardon me. Um, I'm thinking of other things. They used to have different versions before with different names. I think there might be still a few, I, I, I could be mistaken, but for the exam requirements, you just need to know about foundation, essentials, standard, and data center. So with foundation, you get no virtualization rights. Um, and I think that's actually been changed now. This is from 2012 material. I think you actually, and I have a video about that. I'll, I'll link it if that's the case. At least I'll put an annotation to let you guys know. Um, essentials is limited, limited virtualization rights. So let's go back to the, the Nova, the foundation. So we get per server licensing limited to one processor only up to 15 users, uh, cannot be virtualized and cannot be used at a, at a virtualization host. So that's important to understand that has to be on physical hardware. Um, and it's only going to be able to connect 15 users to your server. So 15 users are going to be able to log on. That's it. Um, it's only going to support one processor. Um, and that does not uh, talk, that doesn't have anything to do with cores or threads. That just has to do with the physical CPU. Then we get into essentials. Now, I just wanted to point out that small business server, as you may or may not know, is completely gone. In its place, they've kind of tried to put foundation and essentials. Most people aren't using these, though, in replace of, off, of, of small business servers. They're using standard, uh, Windows Server Standard and just Exchange 2013, and they're biting the bullet of the price. But that's what this is supposed to be for. Um, so that's important to understand. So with Essentials, you get limited uh, virtualization rights per server licensing, uh, per proc licensing in SPLA. So that's important. Up to two processors only. Uh, so you can have two processors with, with that uh, um, OS. Up to 25 users, no CALs. So that's that's quite a bit more, um, but still that's not going to be for anything larger than, you know, 25 users. And keep in mind, that's going to be also user accounts that you're going to use for other things. So if you, <laughs> that's not many users. Um, and it can be virtualized, but cannot be used as a virtualization host. I think that has changed now. And you can use it as a virtualization host in 2012 R2. Um, so standard workload optimized. Um, so this is more for 
Um, and, and I for, kind of forgot to mention, so foundation was kind of for an entry level or cost effective OEM only. Essentials is a small business cloud enabled. Standard is a workload optimized. And data center is a virtualization optimized. And we'll explain why. Um, so standard, uh, uh, you get processor and CALS. Now standard is what we use most of, for most of my server deployments that I've used previously with my last job were standard. But my new job, they use everything as data center pretty much. Uh, processor and CALS, up to two processors per licenses, no processor limit. Um, so virtually, virtual use rights, two instances. So you can have up to two VMs within the version of Windows Server and full product features, uh, which is a, um, this is parity with DC. I'll be honest with you, I'm not too sure what they mean by parity with DC. Um, the only thing I could think they're talking about is having two, two different servers that are Active Directory servers that replicate the Active Directory users and computers across each other, but I didn't think that was limited in any of those cases. Um, so we might want to check that out. Um, and the other thing to talk about is data center. Now, data center is great because um, you get uh, um, processor and CALS, up to two processors per licenses, no processor limit, same as with standard. But the big thing here is virtualization releases unlimited instances. You can have as many VMs as you want, and you get full product features. So it's important to understand, basically, how many VM licenses you get because if you ever were to get audited by Microsoft and you didn't have these these CALs or these licenses in place, you would be what we call SOL. If you don't know what that acronym means, it basically means you're out of luck. Um, so you want to make sure that you understand these concepts because it's really important. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the different requirements of each ver uh, version of server. So if we look at Windows Server 2012 R2 data center, um, maximum number of users based on licenses, uh, which means CALs, uh, maximum SMB connections, uh, server message block, um, that's how many connections they've tested it with. You might be able to get more or less through, but that's how many they've tested it with for, for data center. Maximum RAS connections. Now, what RAS is is routing and remote access. That basically just means VPN connections. Maximum IAS connections is that looks like two billion. Um, yeah, those th these are some really big numbers. Six million SMB connections, two billion IAS connections. Maximum number of sixty-four bit processor sockets, sixty-four. Now, I think those are what I'm going to call, in Windows terms, hard quotas. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can do more than 64 uh, sockets, um, uh, CPU sockets with data center. I, 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 do, I don't think that's just how many they've tested, like with some of the other figures. That is literally how many you can have. Maximum RAM is 4 terabytes, uh, which is a credible lot of RAM. Uh, I guess they're trying to get into the supercomputer industry a little bit there. Um, server can join a domain. Yes, yes, of course. Um, so the other thing to talk about is Windows Server 2012 R2 standard. Um, pretty much the same specs all the way down to, well, it's exactly the same specs. Um, and then we get into Windows Server 2012 R2 essentials. Uh, 25 uh, users, um, so you, you, you do get CALs with those. Um, maximum connections, um, looks like the same number, but there's no commas. Uh, 50 RAS connections, which is quite different. Uh, 50 IAS connections, two sockets, 64 bits, uh, 64 bit, uh, gigabytes of RAM only with essentials, um, and 32 gigabytes for foundation. So you can kind of see those. I'm going to kind of skip past this. Um, this stuff is kind of the more drier stuff in Windows Server 2012, but you do need to know this for the test. Um, so I apologize if this is boring. <laughs> so uh, Windows Server uh, sales channels availability by edition. Data center uh, for retail, no. Um, you can't get this in retail licensing. You have to get volume licensing or OEM licensing for data, uh, data center. So if you're getting OEM licensing, essentially it's coming from the OEM that you bought it from, HP, Dell, Lenovo, uh, to name a few that I usually work with. Um, data center, you can get retail and volume licensed, and of course OEM. Foundation, you cannot get retail and you cannot get volume licensing. You have to get it from an OEM. 
and essentials you can get from all three. Um, so in installation requirements, if your computer has less than the following hardware specifications, Windows Server 2012 will not only will not install correctly or possibly at all. So this stuff you can't you might be able to get away from away with because when they recommend 1.4 gigahertz, you know, if you're talking about a you know, if you're talking about a single core Pentium or something like that versus, you know, an i7 at 1.4 gigahertz and virtual machines, we're going to have a little bit different performance. Of course, the hypervisor being one that's uh, that's type, um, I believe it's type 1, which would allow you to have better hardware speed versus type 2 with something like VirtualBox. Um, you know, you're going to be able to get pretty close to hardware performance. So having an i7 versus a single core um, 1.4 gigahertz CPU is going to totally be different. So that's why they say possibly at all. Uh, 1.4 gigahertz 64 bit processor, 512 megabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes available disk space on the hard drive that you're gonna be installing Windows on. Again, that can be kind of fudged if you ask me to. Uh, DVD drive, um, <laughs> you don't need this. You can use a USB, that's bullshit. Uh, excuse my language. Uh, Super VGA 800 by 600, a higher resolution, keyboard and mouse or other compatible pointing devices and internet access, of course, for your updates. So and to activate um, the, the installation. Um, a lot of, depending on what kind of ISO you have too, um, you will have to usually activate um, via the internet with your key before you install. It's not like other versions of Windows, like 2003 server. So 32 of available disk space, 32 gigabytes of available disk space should be con considerable, um, should be considered an absolute minimum. Uh, the system partition will need extra space if you install the system over a network, and if your computer has more than 16 gigabytes of RAM installed, the additional disk space is required for paging, hibernation, and dump space. In practice, you are unlikely to come across a computer with 32 gigabytes of RAM and only 32 gigabytes of disk space. If you do, uh, if you do uh, free more disk space or invest in additional storage hardware. So why they're saying 32 um, gigabytes disk space is because, of course, your page file by default in a Windows installation, unless you edit it, is going to use 1.5 times the amount of RAM you have. Uh, that's something they don't explain here, but I just wanted to let you know that's why they recommend that. But again, I don't like using page file if I have a lot of RAM because the page file doesn't even get used if you don't ever run out of RAM. So if you do things properly and you and you use proper overhead and you calculate, you know, a third overhead of what you actually need, you're never going to ever run into this kind of problem. So Windows Server 2012 versus uh, Windows Server 2008 R2. Uh, I just wanted to explain some differences because they might talk about a little bit about that in your MCSA 2012 uh, 7410. Uh, logical processors 640 uh, are supported in Windows Server 2012 um, versus Windows Server 2008, which only supported 256. That's a big difference. Uh, again, in RAM, uh, two to four terabytes. That's a that's two times as much RAM in only four years of production. So good job, Microsoft. And failover cluster nodes, 16 in Windows Server 2008 and 63 in Windows Server 2012. So they're really trying to move up into the data center with Windows Server and supercomputing and uh, you know high availability and that kind of stuff. Was that boring? Well, if it was boring for you guys, I could understand. Um, you know, it, it is it is probably some of the more drier stuff. But it is the first lesson if you were to read a uh, 7410 book, ExamRef. Um, but I kind of feel like this. What if I told you only boring people get bored? Because you know what gets really exciting about Windows Server? It's how much money you can make after you learn this kind of stuff. Especially if you're in developing countries. And you know, part of what I like to do is the free training. So... I really like to help people in developing countries because they're just people like me who are just in different circumstances and I know what that's like. So, um, But again, it, it is very valuable. But that's pretty much all I wanted to show you with that. That's 1.1 installing servers. I hope you guys like this lesson. Please rate and subscribe and thank you for watching.